I'm going to shoot myself. I don't ask these questions again. I think we've got an, we've got an hour of time, so so I don't want to I don't want to not ask these questions while, while I got okay. while I got you here. So, um, so well, I guess we'll talk about uh, Morrison Sound Studios as well, because I guess for for people like me who listen to this music, I guess you know well, what are we thinking? There's probably it in my mind. There's sort of four big kind of studios. Like I I, I spoke to uh, Peter Tatgren the, the other week from Hypocrisy, yeah. so we we're talking yeah. about it's Abyss. Awesome. Yeah, so we've we've got uh, Morrison Sound Studios. Yep. Um, what's what's Eric Studio? Eric Rutan Studio. Oh, Mana. Um, yeah, Mana. Mana. Studio. And uh, like Devin Townsend. So I, I remember like when the original yeah. Lamb of God CD dropped. I think that was recorded with Devin. So those in in my head, those are sort of I guess what I would consider the four big studios that have produced the general output of the music that I listen to. How did you guys get introduced to Morrison Sound Studio and 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 what did that do for you? Because again, uh, if I try to relate this to, to more mainstream music, it feels like to me, Morrison did for Suffocation almost like what Bob Rock did when he did the Black Album with Metallica. Like it just seemed to well, yeah, boost everything. I, you know, I mean, for us getting introduced to Morrison Sound was done through Roadrunner. Yeah. Roadrunner just, they, they knew Jim and they knew Scott. And I mean, you have to figure like obituary, um, you know, Morbid Angel, Cynic, Deicide, um, Nocturnus. Everybody uh, was recording that yeah, back then. A yeah. lot of bands were recording down there, and that was making, you know, that was making that Florida Florida niche back in the 90s to, to be the hotbed of all the fucking thrash and death and shit metal mm. coming out. And when we got signed to Roadrunner, we decided, they really decided, you should go here and work with this guy. And for us, we didn't know any better. You know, we weren't, we didn't know how to record ourselves. We didn't know, you know, what are good techniques to use in recording. We didn't have the facility or know of the facilities to go to. So it was really eye opening because when we went down there and actually went into Morris Sound to see like the gold records on the wall from Warrant and like other bands. You know, were they recording guys that? like that? Were they warrants yeah, and they stuff are. like they, that? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, and I had uh, no idea. Yeah, to see those to see those um records on the wall and, and shit like that, I was like, damn, I was like, this is a serious studio. And then um, you know, they had like they had the A room and the B room, and in the A room, Morbid Angel was just getting done with Jim Morrison. So okay. like we went in there to go and smoke some weed and everything. You know, just because we were able to hang out and clean yeah. up, we went up and go smoke it. And then we go in the B room, and in the B room was where we did all of our tracking with Scott. And I mean, Scott is just, he's just a fucking awesome engineer. Like, he just knows, I mean, from experience, you know, what to do and how to do it. And for us, we didn't really know Dick. So we thought, you know, because we were well rehearsed with our songs, at least so we thought until, you know, we went in there and like, he was like, all right, you got to play this. And then he went through taking out all the noise. And then he went through making us play it again. And then he went through trying this out. And then he went through the cabinets and how the drums were set out. And like, just, you know, he, he was just super knowledgeable. And it, it kind of really rubbed off a lot on me, you know? Uh, and I think on the other guys too, because the process of recording, we really didn't know that well. And he gave us that process on how you should do it properly you know and that was you know when i'm 21 years old now it's 30 something years later and still to this day i follow those types of things in my own recordings and everything else you know mm. so it, it, it was really a very eye-opening experience it was a humbling experience um it, it was bad and good all at the same time because for all the being the little ego strong kid who didn't really know anything, you know, and and having to fucking really put in that amount of time and effort into making a recording yeah. and learning how hard it really was to do that was was something else. Man. It really was, it was something else.